introduce our guest speaker, who is someone we are all pretty familiar with. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in January of 1992 and attended basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and went to follow-up training at Fort Gordon, Georgia. He was honorably discharged in January of 2000 from the Colorado Army National Guard. His specialty in the Army was communication. As our district superintendent of schools, Mr. Lovato has truly put his military leadership skills to use and has a great use for his communication skills that he's learned while in the U.S. Army. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and give a big warm welcome to Mr. Rick Lovato, U.S. Army General. Good morning. I've spoken a lot at graduations, uh, events, National Honor Society. I don't know that I've ever been more humbled uh, than to speak on a Veterans Day. I'm not decorated. I never went to active duty overseas. Uh, I did serve during uh, the Persian Gulf crisis and, and those kinds of things, but I'm not a highly decorated war veteran. But I learned the importance of our military quite well. And I can tell you, I have two different audiences in this room. The adults and those that have served understand the importance, the responsibility, and the dedication it takes to be a soldier, regardless of what uh, branch you served in. And then your students, you young people in the bleachers, have no idea really what it's like. We have a young man right in front of me here who was here just a year ago, who's serving in the Air Force, and he's living his dream right now. When I sat in the bleachers like two students, I had no idea what it was about. And I really wasn't aimed at entering the military in any way. And even while I was in the military, I'm not, I'm not sure that I respected what it meant to be a soldier. Several years later, serving as a superintendent in another district, we took a trip to uh, Washington, D.C. And seeing the Arlington Cemetery and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and really taking in what it means to serve your country, the responsibility, the dedication, and the commitment to put your life on the line for a country is unlike anything I really imagined. And it wasn't until then, quite honestly, that I appreciated the service that I did, as little as it may have been. In the military, you learn a lot of different things, and it isn't just about shooting your rifle or your tank or your ship, but you learn responsibility. You learn what it's like to become something, part of something much bigger than yourself. And in my career, the leadership tools that I've been able to learn and obtain over the years really is a tribute to the military, and I didn't give that any credit until several years after I had left. To be part of something bigger than yourself, it's like being the head of a family, the head of a household. When you have people relying on you to do your job, as small as you might think that might be, KP was one of my favorite jobs in the military, to be honest with you. That's kitchen patrol. And I love to work in the cage and dump the food into the garbage disposal. Really, not a great job. Pretty gross. Every once in a while, somebody threw an apple in there and you might have stuck it in your pocket. But other than that, it really wasn't any glory to that. But imagine what it's like if you don't have anyone to clean up the messes. Imagine someone that doesn't do the dishes or cook for you, or clean the floors. Everybody serves a role, and accepting that role and doing that role to the best of your ability, people count on that. And in the military, lives are on the, they're on the, on the line. You're actually responsible for someone else's life. A whole country, to be honest with you. And so, now, in my old age, and I look back at, at what I learned and what I didn't appreciate when I was 25, I realized that my role now 
if anything, I can give to you guys as students and to appreciate for those of you that have served, it's do your job. Your job right now is to be a student, be a son, be a daughter. Do it well. Do the best you can. Maybe you have a job. Do it well. Do the best you can. Because somebody's counting on you. And as you grow up and you get a family, and you become a father and a husband or a wife, do your best. Do it well. Because somebody's depending on you. You become a career person and you get a job. Do your best. And do it well. Because someone is counting on you. Whether you believe it or not, all of you are going to have to grow up and leave high school. And you're going to be faced with responsibilities and duties and things that you do not like to do. Maybe it's as simple as, that's not my plate on the stove. My brother left it for me. My sister left it for me. You pick it up. You know what? Do your job, do it well. And be accountable to somebody else bigger than yourself. If you can handle that and you can apply that to your life later, the appreciation that you'll have is much like the appreciation we need to have for our veterans. Again, I served and I went through basic training and I went through my AMT and I did a lot of things that every veteran has to do. I'm not highly decorated. I'm not a hero by any stretch of the imagination. We have real heroes in this room right now. But at the same time, those heroes just aren't in the military. You can be a hero to your family, your friends, those that work with you and around you. Be part of something bigger than yourself. Be accountable. Be respectful. And live your life with honor the way these veterans have done before you. Again, I, I am super humbled to be here. I, I don't know if I've been more nervous in the presence of people have served, um, but it's it's truly an honor and a privilege, and I'm very proud to have done my part, regardless of how small it may have been in the big picture, to serve our country. Thank you.